Hi guys, I'm afraid my little crawler bot friend here is about to be recycled. Um, if you want to watch the video that I made him on, uh, I'll probably put a link in there so you can see him. But he's gone past his useful date, in other words I don't use him anymore. Um, so I'm going to take him apart again. I'll, I'll just demonstrate what he did. I would. Oh, there you go. So that was his purpose in life. Anyway, he's now going to be taken apart. Um, if you watched the original video, you'd see he was actually made from the gearbox and wheels from a radio controlled car, a toy that I bought in charity shop. Um, it's got the battery compartment, it's got the radio unit in there, the receiver. Um, and I'll probably reuse all those parts in my next project, which is going to be a hexabot. Uh, basically something that crawls forward using six legs. Uh, I've seen a couple of them on YouTube, so I'll put some links in to the originators that I'm copying, or at least basically copying. Um, so that's it, this poor little chap's going to be taken apart and I'm going to recycle the parts that are in him. So bye bye, Mr Crawlerbot. Right, I need 12 legs for this hexapod. 12. It's only got, only got 6 legs but I need 12 um, pieces of plastic to do it. Start there. It's two inches wide this strip, so if I cut half inch strips out of it, I should be able to get four strips per length. I'm not sure how accurate it needs to be. I'll probably find out when I build it. quite sure how accurate my cutting will be either, so I might have to choose the best out of a bad bunch. That looks like I'm lucky and it's just missing that hole there that I've got drilled in it. Because I've actually used these strips for another project that I'm now recycling again. I think I might be speeding this video up because this is getting a bit boring to watch, I should imagine. Okay, that's stripped down nicely and quite easily just with an ordinary craft knife and a steel ruler. Right, I need to round off the ends 
a little bit, but I'll leave that till later. Next bit of work is to make the frame. I'll, um, as I say, I'll have to link to the original video so you can see where I'm getting all the details from. This is just a piece of wood I found in my garage that I've stripped out of something in the past. And I just make, need to make a rectangular frame. So I shall measure that up and then cut it. Unfortunately none of the edges are straight. So I'll have to go and do my best. Just deciding how wide I want to make the chassis. Um, what I actually want to do is have the chassis actually cover the wheels just about, slightly smaller, because I want the there's going to be a peg sticking on the outside of the wheel what, like there was on the crawler bot, which does the moves the legs. So I want that to be sticking out about there. So the width of my chassis it's got to be inside. Actually that looks like that's going to be conveniently four inches. Basically I need to measure that distance from the outside of the wheel hubs. Take off the thickness of my wood, which is half an inch. And then make the cross members. I'll need one at each end and one in the middle. And that looks to me like so that's five and a quarter. If we take it inside just a bit, that's going to be five inches. Half an inch for the width of the wood. So my set, my cross members are going to be, each one's going to be four inches. And I think I need three. Right, that's all the bits cut out. That's the main front side bits. And a Cross members. I can see I haven't been very accurate in my cutting. So what I think I'll do is I'll hot glue them first, just to pack them out a bit, and then um, drill holes through and use some of my scrap screws that I collect screw it all together. Just so I get the edges nice and square I'm actually going to use these edges to help me line it up so that when I've finished it's, a, it's got right angle corners. As I say, I shall hot glue that just to get the positions right and then I'll drill holes in it to make it nice and rigid. Right, that's the chassis or frame hot glued together. I shall drill some holes in it now and just screw it together to make it completely rigid. That's quite annoying, that hole that's already there is in just the wrong place. But I'm sure I'll survive. Right, there we are, screwed in place, so that's pretty rigid now. don't know if it needs to be that rigid, but uh, that's what we've got. I need to mount this underneath, so I need to put a spacer in there of some sort, which I just have to have cut another piece of wood, which will go under there. I'll need to trim it a little bit because that's not flat across there. That's the general idea, that should sit under there like that. In fact it might have to sit like that to give us enough clearance. That 
might be safer. Right, do that next then. Alright, that's the mount for the... Right, that's the wooden mount for the motor and gearbox. Cut to fit. So that will go under there. I'll drill a couple of holes down and screw it in place. And I'll also put a couple of cable ties around it just to make sure that the, the hot glue that I've used to stick it on there doesn't give way. I'm making this extra rigid and extra strong because there's going to be quite a bit of vibration going on when this thing's stepping. So it may just pay to be extra safe. I'm just hoping it doesn't add too much weight and it doesn't move at all. Right, this diagram really uh, probably isn't going to help. You'll have to watch the original video. But basically, one leg, two legs, three legs. Wheel turning round. They're all connected at that point there. So as the wheel turns round, as it comes round this way, that leg comes across that way, which pushes the bottom out. It pushes that one further that way, which pushes that leg that way. And it brings the red one, and in this case it's actually going up and down. So the idea is that leg there is pushing down further than that leg and that leg. So that one's the actual one that's doing the motion when the wheel's at the bottom of its turn. When it goes up to the top of its turn, that leg will be up high and those legs will be the ones that are actually doing the motion. Um, so say, you need to watch the original video to get the best idea. But what I do now need to do is all these bits that I've cut up, I need to drill some little holes in the end of them so that we can push some connectors through, some links. Right, I've drilled lots of holes and I've actually screwed some of the legs in place. So I've got a bit of work to do yet, but we're getting close. Right, we're getting a bit closer. Um, I haven't got everything in position yet. But we can have a little demo. What I need to do yet is there's a piece got to go there, and a bracket got to go up there to hold it. And that means I need to make sure I've got enough clearance when that piece goes past so it doesn't jam on it. So I'm going to have to pack that one up a bit higher to give us the clearance. But uh, we're getting close. This is only on one side mine, I've got to do the other side as well. Right, quick update. I've got it all assembled, um, but I have a problem. Basically it's too heavy. Um, the mechanism's working fine. but it's just too heavy to actually move. Now, I think if I reduce the length of that leg, that will reduce the amount of effort it takes. But there's just not enough power at the moment to move the whole thing. So I'll, I'll try shortening that leg and see if that helps. Right, just a quick update. Uh, basically, I'm going to call it a night, I think. Um, not making any progress. The actual mechanics is working, but I just don't think I've got enough power to make it work with the length of legs that I've got. Um, simple um, mechanics. The leverage provided is not enough to actually push those legs when they're actually on the ground. So either I completely remake it or play around changing the lengths of the legs or the lengths of the 
lever arms. But I think the simplest thing to do is admit failure this time. I hate to do that, but I shall admit failure this time and have another go some other time. This is actually quite heavy, especially with the wood that I've used. Um, it might be a bit lighter if I took the radio control unit out, the receiver, changed the battery to a small 9 volt battery or something like that, but I still don't think I'd get enough power out of it to actually move it forwards. So, better luck next time I think.